convene the board meeting for this evening. I'm going to uh, to uh, convene for work, work session, correct? I think that's where we're at. Uh, 4.1 uh, work session, public participation information. Um, each time we address an item, talk about it, at the end we'll ask the community or the public if there's any questions there before we go on to the next one. What we do is we'll go through all of the work session items uh, before we uh, do anything, I guess we won't have to do any vote, but we'll, after each one, we'll talk and ask if anybody has any uh, questions about it and go from there, okay? 4.2 college credit plus agreements for 2016-17 school year, Tom? Yeah, before we start, Ms. Cook couldn't be here this evening. Ms. Vincent was at lunch and broke a tooth in half. She just had work on, so she sure, well, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't drum up business for one of my board members. Yeah. I didn't think about that. But nonetheless, uh, so I'm covering for uh, Mrs. Cook this evening. We have three different uh, pieces here, and I think Mrs. Cook responded to an email. Mr. Blodgett so, so she explained a little more in detail. I didn't see that, I'm sorry. I don't know that you. Uh, I don't see. I don't response. think Andrew got back. I know I John. Was, I sent those. Oh, out. she just yeah. sent it to me. So, <laughs> well, you're all right. Yeah, I asked the question. Drive and leave this all alone. So, uh, what we're going to do is 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 we yeah, um, Cincinnati State's at forty-one fifty. Cedarville is at one hundred sixty-six dollars at the at the ceiling. Sinclair is at forty-one fifty. Wright State is at one hundred sixty-six dollars. So it looks like to me they're either at the bottom or extreme top. Um, we're yeah, we're required to have an agreement with one school. Uh, my assumption is that um, schools like Cedarville are allowing us to have agreements with others as opposed to writing their own. So Cedarville, even though we do business with them, they don't do contracts like the other colleges do. And my question is only about what is the impact of that? It sounds like practically there is no impact to that. We can, our students can still correct. Yeah, we can't. That, that's all I was just asking. Oh, yeah. The fact that we don't have an agreement with them, what does that mean in practical terms? It sounds like not much. Pretty much what happens is that one of the kids come to us and say, we want to go to Cedarville. Where somebody is going to have to call Cedarville and figure out how it works. It's very difficult. That's oh. what my kids went through. Yeah. It's a very difficult process to work through, but it works. Right. So, um, but we do have the contract with Sinclair, which is the one we've always had. Miami University is there, and Wright State's there. Basically, we have the same contract as every other school. You can't negotiate these. They just have one set of contract for everybody. Early on, that was different. There could be a little negotiation until College Credit Plus came into effect. Because at one point, I think we were able to get credits from Sinclair for $20, 20 dollars 24 50 or something like that. So who is it that chooses? Does a student choose which university they want to go to? Yeah. A so student director sports me. No. And we're not. When we stand up and talk to the parents, we have to give them all the rules. And we can't say, parents, to keep your taxes lower, we wish you all would go to Sinclair because it's 41 50 
even though that's a true statement. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's something like this, Dr. Blunt. Parents, we're going to spend about $300,000 this year if you all go to my university for 166 an hour. If you'll just go to St. Clair, it'll be about 125, and that's almost $275,000 we can leave in that general fund and not have to come back to you for money. Well put. Can't say that. Can't say that. Is that, is that on video? That's, video on video. That's what you can't say. And I'm a Miami graduate, so I think they did a, a nice job. My sister graduated. They did a nice job because she graduated from there. Let's put it that way. So I don't have anything against the colleges, but it is amazing that one charges 166 while another charges 4150 for the same class. And do we have a sense again? I don't recognize we're not steering them to one or the other, but do we have a sense for how that mix has sort of fallen out? We will know better. better. Tara can comment better on that, but okay. it is a convoluted. It's, you can't project it at all. It looks like, it looks like more are going to be there than other schools, um, but obviously because there was a finance class that met our high school requirement and it was online and my kids didn't, we didn't want them driving and taking, they, they wanted to be on the high school campus. So that met our need because they were able to sit here in study hall and do their online class and it met that need. So that's why we chose that. But now they're choosing, this summer they're taking classes and they're doing them through mom and something else because they're, um, it's, once again it's online and it met, it met that need. And you also have to look at, like with Cedarville, you have to take an ACT in order to get accepted. So that is the accept, in order to get in, it's much more difficult at Cedarville versus Sinclair and Mom, it was a very easy process to get in. So as you're going through the process, it depends on what you want to go through to get in. So you're looking at a lot of different things. So Sinclair is going to get a lot more because they make it really easy to go through. Mom, really easy to get through. So there's a lot of different factors that you're looking at. So as a parent, you want to look, yeah, it's great to look at it, that the tax, you know, it's only using as much tax dollar money, but yet you're also looking at how's it going to work for your family. Oh, yeah. We don't want to leave campus, so that was a factor for us. And just if I can plug in for a minute, I just looked up the credit cost for at like the regional campuses <coughs> of Miami, and there is a discount for our district. Um, so mom is per credit hour all $199. How much? $199 per credit hour. If like I went and just took a class at mom, it would be $199 according to their website. And what are we paying? $166. Yeah, so I mean, so when you multiply that, you know, out, yeah, so there's a break. Okay. Any other questions? 4.3, uh, discussion of tax abatement of Victory Wholesale Group. City school compensation agreement. Mr. Pinnell. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, um, the uh, Victory Wholesale Group has requested from uh, the city a tax abatement to uh, do an, ex uh, an expansion on their current facility uh, that's located within the, the Springboro City boundaries. Uh, this falls under the, the law that uh, uh, a community reinvestment area, which allows the cities to give tax abatements. Um, there was a change in the law in 2004 that put uh, the, in a location, there are certain locations and then size of the agreements, you had to have approval from the, the school district that's tied to that area before the city can enter into an agreement. So that's why this came to before you tonight. Uh, the abatement is for um, a 100% abatement um, for 15 years. Um, the, currently, on that, those three little parcels of property that are vacant, we currently collect about $9,505 in tax dollars from that. The current main facility that they have, we collect approximately $106,630 on that main piece of property that they have their building on right now. Uh, 
The reason they've asked for the abatement is that, you know, they've got another operation in Monroe, and then they've got some offers from Kentucky that um, they, they would like to bring together their operations in, in one location. And they'd really like to do it here. Um, but they, they, you know, they say they've got an offer from Monroe and also from Kentucky. Um, but, you know, they've been here since 1987, uh, longtime resident, longtime supporter um, of, you know, Springboro. So we're just, I'm just pro providing you the information. Um, and we provided this information to Larry Bud the other day that if, uh, if they did the, the $10 million project without any abatement, then we would receive approximately $134,000 a year on that. If they did. Now, if they, if they don't get abatement, they might do it, they might not. Um, based upon the way a lot of things are right now, I think it's probably likely that they might move um, if they don't get the abatement, because I think they will get the abatements other places. Um, and then what will happen is if we, if we do not, if we approve the abatement, the city is then required to provide a payment back to the school district for one half of the, um, the income tax that they collect on that new piece. Um, so that would be a payment of $37,500 per year. Is that just during the 15-year abatement? That's during the 15-year abatement. Once that 15th year happens and the abatement stops, then the payment from the city would stop. Um, and then also, if um, there's a tax incentive review committee that meets on an annual basis that involves the school district, the city, uh, the county, and then the Warren County uh, Development Group, uh, to ensure that the, the tax abatements are on schedule and doing what they're supposed to do. So if for some reason this doesn't meet those requirements, they don't do what they're supposed to do, they don't bring in the amount that they're supposed to, the, the TURP, as what it's called, can actually either sometimes reduce the amount of abatement or even suspend the abatement early if they're not doing what they're supposed to do. So there are safeguards to ensure that they bring into the community what they're saying or they want to do. So what's on the agenda tonight are two different actions. One is to, to give the city the authorization to enter into the agreement with Victory Group for the abatement. The other one is the revised agreement that we have with the city. Because um, we currently have an agreement with them that under the old CRA rules, we get 35% of the um, income tax for the abatement. That's the one that's that's up there that's um, closer to Austin Landings. Um, but the, which we didn't have any say in that one. But because of this one being the size it is and under the new 2004 rules, we get 50%. So that's why there's two actions that will occur. Any questions? I know. Uh, you know, as long as I've lived here, it's been difficult because most of the tax money is raised by residents and we don't have a lot of industry. And, uh, all that area out there that's part of our city, Franklin gets on the other side of Pioneer. We've tried to, you know, annex that. But it, I think it's better to go through with this and, and uh, not risk losing them maybe altogether and maybe, you know, it'll help with some employment here too. Long term. Long -term. Yeah, just long -term. Yeah. I agree and I think it also shows an appreciation that they're a part of our community. I just don't think we want to lose them. Yeah. I've known him a long time, so he's important a lot of people. Yeah. 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 And have you paid the building? Yeah, I mean, I think the, you know, the $134,000 that they were to build this, uh, that we would receive, I should say, without the abatement. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that that's sort of a, uh, an unrealistic number um, from, from what they've sort of submitted to us. I mean, I think you know, it mentions the reason that they're 
uh, they're seeking the abatement is really because there's some wetland remediation, topographic issues, and some expenses that I believe are in the $1.9 million range. So I, I don't really see them, if we were to not approve the abatement, I don't see them really, they're not going to do the project here. Right. Right. Uh, so you know, that, that whole comparison of you're, you're foregoing roughly $1.5 million, you know, that delta between what we receive from the income tax and the property tax, it, it just, it, it's sort of made up. Um, because I don't see a scenario where they're actually going to build right. without the abatement. Right. So I think our choices are, do you want to you know, have a, you know, potentially this employer leave and have a vacant building, or do we want to uh, provide this, which helps the community and it helps us. We will we'll pick up that 30 something thousand um, uh, you know, as well. So I mean, I, I don't, I don't really see a scenario where this is. Uh, I, I think this is the right thing to do. I, I think that other scenario is sort of unrealistic and not really a fair comparison because there's, there's no way that material. Is important. And, and it's not like we're losing 134,000. We don't have it already. So and I don't think we'd ever get it. Right. And so, but we have the, the possibility of bringing, you know, what they say, 75 employees to the area. So we're going to gain residents, which. You know, brings more tax income, and you know, to the possibility of you know future growth with the company. I think it you know makes sense. Yeah. Um, one thing, and I know I, I asked this question to John, and he responded. Yeah. But we we could just go over it again. It has to do with uh, the resolution with Correct. the city. Right. Um, so I, just, I was reading it. And I know that there's um, some language in here that if um, the new employees don't generate. Um, over a million dollars, you know, that they're not required to make a compensation payment to us. It sounds like that's very unlikely. Correct. I mean, we're estimating they're five million. Correct. We're estimating five million. And then you said that also that the review committee. I mean, if something if we were in a situation like that where it was below the, the yes, the turf would meet, and then more than likely either reduce or even remove the tax abatement because if they were that far down right. under what they were estimating, there would there'd be. They would not have met their $10 million goal either of uh, doing the construction because there's just no way that uh, with that size, what they're adding or what they're adding, because right now their property is valued at about um, $7 million. So they're, they're more than doubling in value what they're going to be doing there. So they definitely should easily hit that $5 million mark, especially and since they're already got, you know, their, their intent is to shut down Monroe and bring those folks up. And that's, you know, Sort of number of people are in. And the section four in this agreement with the city that talks about there is sort of a cap. Right. Um, you know, that if they were to, to add so much Correct. that it exceeded what we would have received in property taxes, Correct. it sort of caps. Correct. Income. That's right. So that if, if, that, if that if so if the the if the um, income tax that the city receives is more than if our their payment to us is more than the amount that we would have gotten from the regular real property tax. Which is roughly $134,000. $134, so if for some reason they bring in, you know, instead of $5 million, $50 million, then the city would not have to reimburse us for more than $134,000. So it's, like it's an unrealistic piece. <laughs> yeah, no, it's both the, yeah, I was a little uneasy about the fact that, you know, we don't have a guaranteed minimum, minimum but you have correct. a cap. It just right. felt a little inequitable, but I think that either scenario is, is, is really, really unlikely. Right. So, I mean, if either scenario happens, then something's really amiss with the whole project because they shouldn't bring that much in because it's hard to get from where they are to, to a $50 million payroll. But if they were only a I hope they dollar, do. If they only bring in an extra million dollar payroll, then it's probably, there's, there's something else going on. And we're able to, too, during this tax assessment. Correct. Um, so I go to a new chair, and I know that right. everyone might be there to do that. Um, if, if we have concerns or right. issues or we don't see it coming in, then we can start a problem. But we can Correct. share those yeah. concerns. Yeah. We've got to have it. Correct. I think either seems unlikely. Again, I just on the first read, it seemed odd that you know no minimum, but then there's a cap. But I think again, the extremes are so unrealistic that I, I think I'm uncomfortable. Did you get the message? Yes, I'm trying to. I can hear her cheek chattering over here. So I think it's probably the same as the other one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The snowman and the snowflakes was a big hit to me when they were cold.
Do you like my coat, Lisa? No, you say Paris. Snowflake, snowflake, snowflake. It's called me walker. There, there we go. Yeah. You keep all yeah. the students awake in here, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. 4.4, discussion of the high school and junior high school cooler, freezer, quotations, and need for urgent necessity. Go yes, sir, member, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, we, we've been talking about this a little bit on and off for a while. The, the walk-ins and coolers at the junior high and high school um, were put in several years ago, and they, they, we've been working with them ever since um, Kathy Poor has been here almost two years ago now. And we've been trying to get some issues fixed with them, um, and the, the high school especially is to a point where they, there's no way to fix the problems that they have. So they're failing on a regular basis and we're trying to model through until we can get them fixed. Um, and so what happened is we were trying to fix these as we were going along and while we were trying to fix them, Kathy was in the process also of getting quotations on what needed to be fixed. Because part of the process of trying to get them repaired uh, showed issues that were long-term problems that had been there that just hadn't been seen. Um, the high school, the, the one, the, the floor has fallen so much in that walk-in that there is a fairly large space that creates um, uh, some big ice dams and then we forgot some other water, air and water infiltration problems with those two cores. So, we were hoping to be able to fix them this year, but they weren't able to do that. So, um, so basically what, what we've got is in order for us to get this in place before the school year starts, we can't go through the normal bid process because we don't have enough time for them to be able to, to you to authorize it to do the five week bid time that I need and then get a, a cooler and freezer in here because they're, they're um, hand, uh, not hand made, but they're specially made because of the size. They've got both the high school and the junior high, for some reason, have a weird triangular shape to them instead of a big square, like most of them do. And I don't know why. All the we have a lot of triangular pieces in our buildings here in Springboro. So, which you know, it's nice and aesthetically, but really bad when you're trying to put a freezer. Plus, the the walk-in at the high school actually has a support beam in the middle of it that they have to deal with. So which is another bizarre thing. So we've got that. We've been talking about this for a while. The 006 account, which is food service, they have approximately $800,000, I believe. 821000 They start and, the year with 844, and they usually end about the same amount. Right. And so they're, you know, they operate in the black every year, which is a godsend. They're, they're required by law to do that, but a lot of places okay. supplement food service. And here it's very well run. I mean, they, it's amazing what they do with with how much money they spend. So none of this money comes out of the general fund dollars. It's only out of the food service fund, which comes from um, you know the the, reimburse, the money they get from the federal government for the free reduce re reimbursement, but, and then um, from paying for lunches and stuff like that. So none of it comes out of the general fund. The reason that we have to do it in of necessity is the fact that I can't get it done in time to, to meet the needs of uh, going through the formal bid process and making sure that we have them up and running before school starts on the middle of August because it's such a short summer. That's perfect. Excuse me? That would definitely yeah, it definitely yes. Yeah. Wow. So what's your process then to purchase this? So once, once you, if you approve this tonight under urgent necessity, then we'll cut the POs next week, basically. The they, don't have to go, they don't have to go through the bid process. We've, got, we've already got quotes. Yeah. Here, these are the quotes that Kathleen got. got. We've got at least five quotes for each of the walk-in cooler combinations. And then the one that, that she selected, there was a, you know, a, an additional discount for making sure we got it done you know, before June 1st, because if not, then it's, we're after the fact. So. so you did get multiple quotes. Yes, I have, we have five quotes per building. How is that different than 
the other process. Okay. The, it sounds the, like you did get five. How well, we got five quotes because that's we try to get as many as you can when you're when you're going through the process. Three is what you really want minimum and as many. Uh, on the normal bid process for um, under the requirements for public entities, you you have to get approval by the board to to start the bid process. It has to appear at a local um, publication, oh, and then a minimum of a week later, then you, it has to be published on either your website or again in the newspaper. Then there has to be a two-week waiting period before the bids can be due, and then you take the lowest, most responsible bidder to the board. Now, sometimes you end up with one bid, sometimes none, sometimes 50, you know, on a normal bid process. But in this process, the quote process, basically you go out and you tell people, here, this is what I need. Give me what you think is what's going to fit or make it work, make it better. So she was working with these folks uh, and, you know, that we had several different companies quote and um, this is the most, the, the most cheapest, most responsible quotation that we've received. Gotcha. So that's what the difference. Any questions from the public? 4.5, discussion of ground lease to Mike Farm Enterprises. Down yes, down. we've got uh, out at five points for ever since five points has been in existence. Um, the Mike Farm um, Enterprises has leased approximately 14.24 tillable acres that they plant corn on that's right behind the high school. Um, which is good for us because then we don't have to cut it. <laughs> so we don't have to maintain it, they do. Uh, the only thing different this year over other years is, is they have asked us for a three-year commitment as opposed to just a one-year commitment. They've been coming back every year, um, but you know, they, they, would, they, they kind of, they missed a kind of a prima, op, me, prime opportunity at the uh, end of February, beginning of March, where it was nice and dry, that they would have liked to have gotten some work done on the fields. But because we didn't have the agreement in place, they legally, on their own insurance and ours, could not have worked the field. So that's why they're asking for a three-year lease this time. They pay us uh, $110 per acre uh, per year to do that, and so that's what this agreement is. It's just something, and we won't have to come back for another couple of years now, but every year we've, we've approved this agreement with them. Is that the similar amount breaker that we've received in the past? Yes, and actually up until last year, or two years ago, they, the, the, the school district didn't charge them at all. It yeah. was just two years ago, I think, where we asked, we just told them we wanted to get a charge, we wanted to get a fee for it and $110 an acre, I called around and checked with some other farmers, and that was a reasonable fee for leasing the land, and my farms was okay with that. So, yeah. so that's why we went, that's why we get a little bit, it's not a lot, but it's a little bit for the acre. And even though it looked like it's a three-year deal, but if I recall correctly, we had an option, right? If, if yes, if, no, if for some reason it, so we, we need that land to build time. another building, whatever, we can, we can cancel within I think it was 30 days, days now. Yeah, 30 yeah. days, so, which I don't see that. So this covers them for when things like the weather. Correct. If, 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 it's, if it's favorable and they get the fields turned early, they can turn the field. But our hands aren't tied if we Correct. ever decided to do something else. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Any question for the public? All right. 4.8, discussion of replacement staff computers. All righty. Uh, we will be coming to you for approval. Can I skip some? Yeah, 4.6. Oh, yeah. didn't have it out of order. <laughs> it's not. No, it's okay. Let's go 4.6 then, John. Is that okay? That's good. I think you better just Yeah, it's <laughs> random. I keep you on your That's head. That's right. Pay right. attention. Yeah. Many items as John brings. I know. Sorry. We're going to take a break. I know. All right. <laughs> sorry. It's one, of those, it's one of those months where it just all hits. And then, then I won't have anything to free You said that last month. No, that's <laughs> not. I guess, I guess we need to fix the pavement at Clear Creek. And well, we've got, what we've got is in, in our five-year 
four caps. We've got a certain amount set aside to do certain things. Um, and then uh, Todd wanted to add a little bit more um, into the pavement for this time. So we're looking at trying to do about $150,000 worth of pavement. And I want to concentrate those at, at Clear Creek and Five Points. Uh, for, five, we, for years at Five Points, we've had issues with oh, not gosh. enough parking. Um, and the majority of that needs to be in the front because that's where the majority of our, our um, lack of place is. Plus, it's so moist up there. As soon as you go off the edge of the pavement, uh, it's mud. It's, there's nothing in between pavement and mud. So, what, um, but our first priority on this piece also is the to finish Clear Creek. Uh, over the break, we ended up getting a really good deal on some pavement there. Uh, $30,000 worth of pavement. That's how much it costs. That's all that pavement cost was $32,000, which is really inexpensive. It's amazing. And they were able to come do it right then during spring break. That's why it was so cheap, because they had a window. They, their plant was open. They had enough. So, so we've got part of that done. $150,000 should finish that pavement out, give us a, a road that will run off of that new pavement back to um, the, where the buses drop off, and it will have a big turn, you know, big circle area. And so that's where parent drop off and pickup will be then. Get them so off of the so they'll get them off the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be picking up, dropping off in the back, and then when they come back out, the drive that we have the cones along right now would be the exit for parent drop off. That way, the parent pickup and drop off exit will be different than where the buses go in yeah, and out. So cool. we'll be able, so between. What we want to do at five points and what we want to do at, at Clear Creek, we're estimating about $150,000 to do that. Um, so we have to start the bid process. So that's all I'm asking for tonight is just approval from you all, and that just takes a vote to approve us to start the bid process. And it'll be in the paper, it'll be on the website, it'll be a two week wait, and then we'll come back to you at the, the first opportunity in May after that for a, an approval of there. I, and, you know, within the next week, I have to get all the, the paperwork together that I need to, to have the people, folks be on. Okay. Well, I, I kid John about how much he has on there, but the issue is here, because he and I meet about this often, is as far as our facilities in this district, this district has not had much work over the years. Over the last four years, we it's not been by choice most of it. It's been by necessity. People follow through roofs because they haven't been maintained. I mean, we have to take care of the district, and we're at a point we just can't squeeze much more out of what we have. We have got to be able to repair things, and we're larger now than we've ever been. We're almost at 6,000 kids. Clear Creek is working out beautifully, much better than we thought, actually, in terms of being a fully functional school. So now's the time to go ahead and finish that building off because it's going to be there for good. The addition there last year is working out great, but there are some things that we need at five points even after we moved the whole grade level out of there, they still are over a thousand, just broke a thousand. So we need the space. Uh, there's a lot of times we're having to send our equipment out there to fix the ground and regrade and sow grass because people drive off. There's nowhere else to park. The staff is so large, there's nowhere left to park. So they park in the grass and sink up to their axles and we're getting them out and having to fix things. And it's, it's a problem. Not that John's going, yeah, you did it. Just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> at the same time, John has a lot on here because these are things that are just, when you see him come with an urgent necessity, it's just, it's falling apart. It's the issue. So where are we adding the parking at five points? It's going to be in the front. It is going to be in the so front. So we're, we're going to extend, we're going to extend the sides there. Yeah. And my intent is hopefully to come toward the detention area a little bit with another row. Okay. So that we'll be able to, all, I won't say double the amount of places in there, but probably add about 70% more than part so of there's the enough room there to put another row before it. Correct. Okay. That's the not going to fix the problem. problem. It's going to help. It's yeah, because then it falls off. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's well and, 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 you know, you yeah. don't want to go too far into the detention basin yeah. because that's what that is, is the mm -hmm. detention basin. So on a really big rain, that thing is supposed to fill up with water. So you don't want to put asphalt too far in there right. so that you have a big rain and then everybody's car is on the water. So that's why you have to, to right. figure out how far can you go reasonably right now with 
out anticipation. I mean, you can see out there about where the water line has ever been, and that's not a, we've got, I can get a whole lot of water line on top Well, another reason we put it out front is it's just safe. When you force right. people to enter through the front of the building, it's safe. Probably instead of putting it out back where the teachers park, because right. then you get in a position where you need to leave doors unlocked so people don't have to walk all the way around if it rains or if they're elderly. It has to be out front. Well, and, so and that you know, five points, you know, unlike Dennis that has a few places here and there you can add spots, five points has the front and the very back. Yep. That's it. There, there are no other places because everything else is a detention area right around the front. So, but Roughly how many spaces do you know how many of that? I don't, I, I th I'm hoping to get about 30. Well, I think we've got say. we've got right around 30 or so out front, and I'm hoping to add about that much, which is twice. But I, I'm only going to guarantee probably about 25. A lot of people, well, they're new buildings. Why don't they have enough pavement? The day the buildings opened, I was a principal. I opened up this elementary myself in San Diego. We couldn't do a two grade level function anytime because we've never had enough parking there. So all of these buildings were that way. I mean, you build a building to stay within budget, you never have enough. So on that, the pavement we always knew was going to be something additional. Well, unfortunately, at five points, it's a much greater issue than it is at Dennis. I think, does Dennis have more no, pavement? Believe it, no, the believe, exact it, same? believe it or not, it's exactly the same. Okay. It's, it's fashioned a little differently, but remember, too, Dennis has extra roadway around it that five points doesn't have. That's Parking right. spaces, yes, but Dennis has more asphalt because of where it's located, so the parking is just People are there on back. party day. People park all over the road. Right? Oh yeah, Very we do play in the mud there too. Correct. Though. Yes, we I do know. play in the mud I there too. And, 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 Let it be known. And, yeah. and, and, and when we end up, when we end up doing adding some more pavement, there will be some more. Out Thank there. you. Yeah, I went there when they didn't have grass. So yeah, that's that's right. Right. That was real fun. So just real quick again, I know you, John, you touched on this briefly, but this is part of this is incremental to what was assumed in the five year. Correct. Or this or is well, there was we we hundred thousand dollars. There's Excuse me. I asked for a hundred. Right. So I I'm putting in fifty that was in the five year, and then uh, Todd asked the Tara to add another hundred into that. So it's not a done deal. He's just getting started. If, when once the five year forecast is complete, we're going to have to look at if it all works. Right. Correct. Right. Fair. Right. Just because we start the process and accept bids doesn't mean we're correct. Because right. until until you actually accept yeah. the bids, nothing is up. So okay. there's a number of things that are additional, uh, not a lot in the five year but if they don't fit they'll be pulled out we will not get more correct all right so this is 100 100k is the incremental amount 50 was already in correct correct when are you hoping to do like to finish off clear creek and to do the five points well that would be this that hopefully after june first or what, in between june so before the beginning of the school year correct once the teacher's last work day is done well well that plus once we start getting some funds because my funds are tapped out for this year to there's no extra, so I already told my guys to <laughs> stop buying stuff. So, yes. <laughs> okay. 4.7 discussion of replacement phone system and pro on call. The uh, current phone system that we have was installed in 2006 when the new buildings were built. It was purchased on a 10 year lease. So, so the uh, the lease is done. We made our last payment this year, so uh, we have a, a distinct need to replace the system. So we've, we've been looking for about six months on what to do, what not to do. Um, if we if we did a full purchase um, and then we hosted our own like it is now, uh, it's fairly labor intensive. Um, and then you know we'd still be within the same dollar figures, but you know we're you know we run pretty thin staffed um, in, in technologies. You know that shows what we're testing. How you know that there's not a whole lot of extra there. So what we did is we went out. We've got we we requested quotations from um, Swoka, from Pro On Call, and from. Um, uh, from uh, Forward Edge, who's our, our contractor that does our, our technology coordination. Uh, and they, they got with another company that, that gave us a quotation. 
in looking at the systems, Prolong Call is uh, the one that we would like to recommend for approval for this. Um, it was it, a little bit more inexpensive in terms of the upfront costs, and the um, annual costs will be much, much better than what we would be getting with the other system there with Forward Edge. Uh, this is a completely hosted system, so everything will be ported over to this company. They will manage it. They will manage the phones. They will manage everything. If we need changes, we contact them. If there's any breakage of the phones, things like that, they're responsible for making sure that gets fixed and, and all. So it will take a load off of our people. Uh, in addition, because it's a hosted system, we'll be porting all our numbers over to them. So another $1,000 a month that we pay right now to Windstream will go away also. So I anticipate us saving probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000 a month um, over what we're currently paying on our current lease purchase and our, uh, our current phone number system with, with, uh, with uh, Windstream. So it's a, it'll save us money, it'll, it'll save us time and effort with our, our tech folks, and it will, we got, we'll have new phones. So it's, it saves us 2000 a month of what we're currently paying all in between the lease and some of the other technology Correct. costs. Correct. Does that include that 2000 savings a month? Does that include sort of the upfront? We have no, the upfront, upfront, the upfront that cost, the, the upfront cost is the, the payback on that's about three years. So if we, if we don't, right now we're recommending a two year contract. So if we don't renew with them, then we could still keep the phones and it would, you know, we'd have to change to a different system or whatever at that point in time. But the, the payback for the, the upfront cost is three years. Which that's fairly common most of the systems that's out there. It's a lot better than the 10-year lease that we were paying for before. So in terms of the impact to the five-year, it's really not an impact. Let's just, just, let's just assume we did this. It, it's not an impact to the total. It's not going to affect the cash balance. It just changes when it actually were incurring well, more upfront. And then yeah, we, had, we had this built into the, the oh, five-year. The, oh, the upfront cost for this year is in the five-year forecast right. for, right. for this coming school year. So, and like I said, what we'll be doing is we should be saving about two thousand dollars a month. So that is actual overall. true saving versus the five year. Correct. Five year included the upfront. Yeah. Correct. Okay. It, yes. We. That's why we, we built that in um, last year or two years ago. I forget what. So you get all John's together. there. If you, we have plans for everything. What, like the teacher computers coming up, they're already planned. We knew that was going to be a right. cost in the five year, but we had to get it all approved. <laughs> well, uh, we're eliminating the junior high library. <laughs> we're going to take that down to just one. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. You want to kick you out of this room? <laughs> yeah. Okay, any other questions? 4.8 discussion of replacement staff, staff computers. The, uh, the staff computers are in their third, fourth year. Fourth year. Third, fourth year. Fourth year. So, they, they're getting tired, and uh, so it, we have it in our five-year forecast that these these get re redone. Uh, they are coming off a lease. We did lease these, uh, so this will be also a lease purchase uh, with Dell. The an anticipation is somewhere in the neighborhood of um, uh, $300,000 or so for um, 375 computers. 256,000 for computers. Uh, much better in terms of power and flexibility. Uh, they don't have drives to come with them. A lot of the laptops, for some reason, don't have drives. But we'll, we, we will be purchasing external drives for the teachers that need, uh, you know, a DVD to be able to play in their classroom, things like that. Uh, but this is right about the same cost that what we're paying now on an annual basis for the current lease for the computer. But the, the huge positive that this does, not only does it get the staff with, with a better computer that is desperately needed, uh, but then the current staff computers will be recycled 
and give us much more computing possibilities for the testing and all that because we'll be able to repurpose them for other needs. We're not getting rid of those computers. We'll be putting them in other places. We'll be making them available for classrooms or testing or whatever needs to be. So another 375 computers will be available for whatever needs that we have in the future, especially for the testing all because the testing don't, the, the testing platforms don't need to be real um, uh, uh, intense on computing power because most of it's online. So they'll, they'll be excellent computers that we can use for the testing needs or other things like that. Let me give you a touch of background on that. that actually, this whole technology plan was before Tara and John both were here. And that was, and I will say, a former board member, Mr. Petroni, he helped with that a lot. It was 1.1 million originally. And the plan always was, in the fourth year, when they're replaced, that those are used out, plus we're staying up with technology. Because when we put this into place, it had been like seven years since they had purchased any computer. And there were like 185 refurbished uh, stationary computers purchased. At that point, our kids hardly even used technology. Now, and I thought it was funny, when we went to pull the technology to do testing, it was like, I don't know how to teach without technology. Everyone was frantic, and they, so they met with me, and I said, this is the best problem I've ever heard. But you know what this means? People are using what has been purchased. That was the whole goal, is to deliver instruction via technology, and it be used, and it's happened. Because it was very difficult to pull those computers to be used, and we worked through it, but it was almost like people forgot what a hard copy piece of paper was, which is not a bad thing when you look at how much we pay for copy paper. So <laughs> it's working out well. So John, thanks for pulling all this together. I know that's right. a ton of work. Good. We won't be requesting a vote on this tonight. We just, I wanted to bring, we, it was, this was another thing I'm prepping you for, so probably the next meeting we'll have that, those, those contracts available for you to, to approve the actual dollar amounts. But it's gonna be pretty much what is in our for, forecast and what we've been planning on. So, and they, that we've got the assurance from, from uh, Dell, is where we're gonna buy them from, that uh, as long as we have that approval before the end of April, they'll, they'll be able to meet our needs and get them to us in time for So it's the same company with you, right? Correct. Yeah. So we'll be able to deploy these at the beginning of the year. And you said it's a lease purchase, is that? Correct. Okay. Which is the same thing we're under now. Same thing we're under. Correct. How many computers are we currently pulling out of the classroom for testing? Depends on, if, if the, it depends on the building. In this building here, every single Chromebook was pulled out of the classroom. Which Plus, is like how many? Most, um, most teachers in the classroom here have um, 10, if you're core content, 10 Chromebooks. Mm -hmm. But they had to be redistributed, So and they were wiped over spring break. Right. So what then they had to do is they didn't have access. And even my computers are being used for testing as well. And, so. we, and we brought 150 computers wow. from that, 50 uh, Chromebooks from Dennis, and 50 from Five Points to augment what they have here. Okay, so I'm trying to but, get a big picture because we don't all test at the same time. So does this 375 computers, how much does this help us with not having to take, like are we gonna take fewer computers from each teacher or are we gonna not use them from one school? Like how is this the, gonna help us? The that intent sense? would be that, yeah, if we could, redistribute those here, then we wouldn't have to take as many from the classroom, then we wouldn't have to take any from Dennis and Five Points. Dennis and Five Points had enough when we were able to leave um, a certain amount within the classrooms that are doing 10 marks. Okay, that stuff. was my question for so, those like math. Correct, so, okay. so that we, we were able to leave enough because they have a larger volume because the PTAs have purchased a lot in the no, past right. and therefore you know we're able to, and, and we purchased more for the 10 marks. So we had more there. The high school, they had enough where we, we only ended up, I think, I think we pulled all of them from math and social studies and then a few of the, and then the carts that were free. Um, so a, a lot of the classrooms still have some there. This building, the junior high, was the most hit by this because they don't have the volume of, of equipment and, and they have big classes where we're testing you know, all of seventh right. grade at one time, all right. eighth grade, and so you're looking at needing 500 devices at one time almost. 
So it significantly helped. It's not like this is just a drop in the bucket. It significantly helped. It will helped. significantly help. Okay. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Well, keep great in plan. mind, when I talk about things we need in buildings, big picture, look, the more technology we have, the more digital textbooks we deliver via that technology. The digital textbooks are probably 60% less than the hardback books. So as people are out there watching this evening, I don't want them to think, oh, they have all these computers. We wish every student in this district had a computer that we own. We have almost half right now that have a computer owned by us. We have tried BYOT. The problem with bring your own device is when you get into these digital textbooks and staff needs to work on those, we are limited. When you look at the federal government of what we're allowed to look at on one of these, there are so many privacy acts on technological devices. Most districts are going to where they own them all and then look at some different things of how parents can perhaps pay a fee. But what we're going to have to look at long term is how we have tech, technology for all kids supplied by us because it saves so much on the textbook. I mean, this year we'll spend 300000 on texts. My first year was almost 800000 so we're saving a lot of money by buying digital text. Plus, when kids are carrying around a bag of books in their backpack, it's a whole lot easier on their body. And I know some people are going to be like, boy, he's stretching for that one. No, really, I'm not. If you go out there and read research on the impact of book bags on a child's spine, there is significant research out there about the impacts of that. When they have a Chromebook and a folder, less for them to maintain, it's exactly what they're going to have to use in college and in a job. I and mean, look at all of us, none of us are really brought to the bag of We have a, I live my whole life on this thing. We're training our kids for the next step. So it is something we're going to have to look at long term. But we did feel the pinch with testing that all of our kids didn't have technology because we hadn't pulled them. So that does mean for a couple of weeks, teachers aren't utilizing technology like they typically do. Of course, when the test happens the day that they're here, it's hard for them to have time to teach them. So. That's an issue right there. Okay. 4.9, discussion of Title I elementary summer school positions. John, you were all. Hey, guess what? I, you I, were I, all Sally Vincent tonight. Hey, <laughs> go ahead, Lee. <laughs> well, uh, sorry, I made her look really bad, too. Uh, we, uh, every year we have to do extended school year uh, for certain students. So uh, for the Title I summer school, that is Title funded by Title I, the money that we receive for that. Uh, we will be requesting uh, positions for May 31st through June 17th for three hours a day at a rate of $27.51 an hour, and that's by contract. That's where that, that dollar figure comes from. Uh, and then on May 27th, there'll be a two-hour planning meeting uh, for staff in order to prepare for this. Uh, these are the kids that that aren't progressing well enough within uh, reading mostly uh, math um, uh, that, that need that extra help. Um, so we're going to be using two math intervention folks here at the junior high. There will be two math intervention folks at Dennis and then eight reading intervention folks at Dennis. And uh, also included in that there's some transportation costs because we do transport these kids to ensure that they get there. Um, if, if you don't transport these kids, a lot of times they just they don't have any way to get to school. Uh, most of our schools are not, you know, ones that are real easy to walk to for, for a lot of these younger kids. So, uh, so they will be uh, they'll be staffing for technology for transportation based on the needs of the students. So, we don't know exactly how many uh, bus drivers or if there is an aid or not that will be needed. Also, depending on the, the kids that sign up for this next week. Is this open to all students that qualified for title services, or did they have to? These are these are the, the students that didn't meet the basically the third grade guarantee piece, okay. right. and okay. so that's who's getting the extra pieces. And then they're going to be tested at the end of the summer session to make sure they pass that third grade. That is the intent. Yeah. And if <laughs> they don't. <coughs> Are they given another chance with a different type of a test? Or what, no, what they what they will do then is, based on, on how they do in this piece, they will have to get with the incoming teacher next year to develop a plan on how they then can get them back up ready for that fall 
it's third grade OAA, but it's not his third grade air test that will be given to meet the requirements of the third grade guarantee. So they so would be put back in third they, grade? They might be put back in third grade for, math, uh, for reading only. Yeah, and then if they pass that fall assessment, could they be then put they, in fourth Then grade? they'll be moved up to the fourth grade at, at any time. Or if they, if, if during that ramp up time, the teachers feel that they've made progress and they give them an assessment, which I can't tell you exactly what that assessment is. But if they give them an assessment, they determine that they've reached that grade level requirement to meet third grade guarantee, they can move up to the fourth grade at any time. Oh, okay. It just, it's, we have to certify that they've met those requirements that's required in law for the third grade guarantee. But historically, if they went through this summer yes. school, they, they historically have passed correct. that third grade yes. because correct we have we have we don't have a whole lot of those students and they these and these um, this summer pro extended school year is very intense okay and at least up until this point they have not had one that hasn't met that needs by the end of that program okay. i've had a couple of parents that have asked me about this program that's why i've asked correct parents got it. Can, can i interject and i only know about this because i've helped with some of the writing to the parents and that um, the, the third grade population that um, may be in danger of not um, moving on to fourth grade are also being offered an opportunity, I think it's one of the Terra Nova tests, cool. um, this spring. So those, and I only know this because I helped write some of the communication on this, so those families will be <laughs> out that and they can request that their child have that alternate test so that they know before the school year even ends that whether or not their child will move on to fourth grade. And then there are those other additional opportunities that you already talked about. But I just wanted to mention that because families may be getting that letter and if they see this on TV or hear about it, um, there's an opportunity to the spring, there's the second um, Ohio test, and then there's the summer opportunities too. So there's multiple opportunities for these kids. We're already providing, uh, when it came in from an elementary standpoint, if they score, what is it, uh, below a 50 down to a 42 is one, and then below that's another, we already provide intervention after school. Well, a couple of days All right, thanks. 4.10. Uh, yes, pay to participate fee passes and season passes. Each year we have to uh, bring these to the board for approval. There is no change to these. Uh, as far as season packet passes or like tickets to get in the game, the leagues control a lot of that. They did have a petition out to increase by $1. We have not heard back on that. I go to a meeting, I think it might be next week or the week after, half a day at the Nutter Center with the high school principal, our athletic director, and they're going to talk more about some things going on in the world, high school sports and athletics. But right now, the pay to participate fees, the board says. And our goal, what Tara and I have been working on, is to, to develop a school system that has a sustainable economic or financial structure to some extent. So right now, I don't think we see the need to increase pay to participate fees. Our athletic department over the last three years has been pretty much right on budget each year. So if anything, we're getting more athletes, which, which helps on a lot of these things. So those fees are not, they're the same as last year. Um, and uh, they, we don't anticipate them increasing. If we come back to you, it's because the leagues have to be too. The uh, individual student sports passed. $50, that gets them into basketball games, uh, or is that right? That is my understanding, it's for the whole year. And I will say this, that I want the board to consider this, we have noticed a drop off in the attendance of our students at our athletic games. I mean, at some point we're gonna to have to look at that. I mean, really one of the goals of sports is to give kids an outlet. I would much rather the kids be here in the stands than not in the stands and out with their friends somewhere. So with that $50, I think we're gonna to have to look at that. I've met with the coaches, we'll probably talk to the athletic council. But it's important to have the kids at these games, not only for the athletes there, but just to build camaraderie of the school community. Um, and it's something I do think we need to look at. Also, when we look at our senior citizens and, and things like that, we may be looking at some different things as well because I want them here as well. I mean, they're paying property taxes here. If they don't have kids in school, they should have some other benefits. And I think that's some things we need to look at. Now, a lot of people out there are saying, well, he's just going to give everything for free. No, these types of things and the scheme of things do not cost a lot of money. 
but we also have to think the more students we get here, the more senior citizens we get here, when they buy soda and, and candy and things of that nature, it goes right back to our boosters. And the reason we have a sustainable athletic budget is because of our boosters. It's hardly ever publicized, but they are paying a vast majority of our athletic program, and band pretty much pays it all. So on both of these things, it's underestimated how much they give back to the community. Whenever we have an athletic event, they're doing the concession stands. <clears throat> so the more people we put in the stands, the more people that's going to access these concession stands. So it's an economical decision, not just a, <clears throat> well, if you drop that, you're going to lose $2,500 on your kids. But if we don't make the $2,500, we might end up with $10,000 more in the booster's pocket, which then allows them to purchase things for the kids, which is what we don't even partly pay for. <coughs> The boosters pay for all of that. And I think that's a real misconception out there in the community. They're not raising money to purchase frivolous things for kids. They're paying for things that, if they didn't do that, we would have to be picking it up out of federal funds. Yeah. So I have two questions. Wait, there you go. Yeah. Okay, I have two questions with that. First off, have we talked to the kids as to why we're not getting them to the game? <clears throat> they have talked a lot, and some of it is the financial impact. I mean, at this point in time, a lot of parents give their kids an allowance and say, you've got to learn to be smart with your money. Yeah. And when Starbucks is $5 yeah. and a cup of coffee gets it, it is really tough to be financially smart unless you're going to forego a mocha latte, I guess. I don't yeah, know. and that's exactly, that's how it is in our family. And so that was part of the decision making. So if that's something that we know is impacting that, at what point, like if we're going to vote on this tonight, at what point are we going to come back in and reevaluate this? Like, what would the plan be if we if we decided that we wanted to consider making this lower or having a family pass? Because if you have a big family and you want to go to the football game, it's a big chunk of change to do that. And you want to support the community. You want to get out there and watch, you know, go to the football game. But it's a lot of money. So, might we consider that again? I mean, it's a pot. I can't guarantee it for next year. When you start looking at that, it's. It's a big decision. I mean, there's a lot of things we're looking at in athletics right now that, and that the coaches have brought. So what's the process? Does it go to the athletic council? That, that would be one of them. But right now, it needs to, our treasurer really has to, we have to meet with her. They need to meet with me. We need to look at the implementation. Who's they? The coaches. coaches. The athletic director. The high school principal's the one that's really involved in this. Because they're at a high school. <coughs> we didn't even look at the way the high school principals monitor the games. A lot of people have questioned why are they both standing down in front of the kids? And so we moved them off to the side. I mean, a lot of times people think we're there just to be an iron fist. They like to talk to the kids too. But if it's people are thinking, well, they don't come to the games because it's so strict. I don't think it's that strict personally. We do have to have rule and order in there for certain to keep people safe. But they moved off to the side, but we still didn't really see an increase in participation. My first year here, it was unbelievable. It was unbelievable how many kids came. So we're, actually we've just started talking about it in the last month, so it's not been an ongoing discussion. Our basketball coach really brought it up to everybody. I think the, um, you know, the 75 for adult pass and for the students 50, I think you pay $6 a shot if you don't buy these, which is yeah. quite a bit. And that's set cheap. by the G-Walk, mm -hmm. so these are definitely not so we need the financial impact. When you're looking at a budget overall, like Mr. Bellagio brought up all the things, you can't be cutting 100000 here and 100000 Next thing you know, it adds up to be a lot of money. So we have to weigh it and we pull it away. I can't guarantee anything is going to happen before next year. But again, I just 
to Lisa's point about how we work through this. Are we approving anything on this tonight? It's, it's in work mm -hmm. session. We have to which approve. they have to be approved. And which item is it? Well, we're going to have a business meeting. It's not on the agenda. Why right? is it approved? This, yeah, this is not approved. Do you think it's not approved or not? Okay. That's why I was just confused because it's like, yeah. it does feel like there is some time to, because I was looking through the agenda making sure I didn't miss it. Um, so do we have, I mean, I have some of the same questions. I mean, I'm looking at the um, document and, and references in there that there will not be a family pass on for this year. So I, I would just like to learn a little bit more because I'm sort of new to the whole athletic thing about the history of that and what we had. Because it sounds like we used to have one. Yeah, we the do. References in the document that we don't have one. They, now. Uh, um, found out they were passing them around to other families. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so that was the issue with them all. But again, it's just those types of things that I'd love to, to learn a bit more about. But is that something that the Athletic Council would? I think we have a meeting coming up. You have the Athletic Council. I'd say I agree. I'm, <laughs> I'm on it as well. Think about sports. I'm looking at the answers. I think, so I think you know, we have a meeting whole, this week. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there we could work through some of this stuff before. When would we need to approve these? I don't know. I mean, it's the next board meeting. So yeah. yeah. Kind of yeah. Well, we can tell you. Hey, you guys want to know? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going to say what Terry can do, but I'm pretty sure she could probably tell you how much we brought in off the passes last year. So if you want to say we don't want the kids to pay next year, it's going to cost X number of dollars to make that happen. Right. We've got yeah, he's that. he's got yeah, Matt has that. Yeah. That would be helpful. I think I feel like we do have an athletic council meeting between now. I think. Or I don't, I don't know. Call. We don't have to have Oh, there's one on the calendar, but I just don't recall. Well, I don't remember what it is. Basically, these just have to be approved sometime before the school year starts. Yeah, before the end of summer. I would like to talk about things. I was just going to say the only rush or deadline on approval for these is that we need to know maybe a few days before we advertise them in Selma. Right. So typically, we start that sale a month out from the first football game. So if we, you know, if we could know in July, that is plenty of time for all of us to mobilize what we need to do to effectively market and sell, sell the passes. So I have a question with this, that maybe in looking at another district, if our concern was with the family pass before, are there other schools that have like an electronic thing that you have to scan? We have them. They have then, a different, like, they, we have some electronic, I don't want my pass when I come in, there's some things they need to check. See, for my pass, I had to manually sign in my pass yeah, the and my pass, number. Right, yeah. right. And yes. so like to say the family passes that other people were using them. They don't have them. You know, if you go to an away game with you walk pass, you just show it to them and sign in. Most but I guess players. whatever the question is to why we, we did away with the family pass, <coughs> it might be something that we talk to the boosters and say, is this something that the boosters would consider working with the district on in order to increase you know, would this be something that we could work together with, or are there other districts that are doing this better than we are? I don't know. I mean, we're not the only district uh, that the is. The games I go to, we have a pretty stellar way that we collect money in our system. I go to some games, and it's like, oh yeah, go ahead, go ahead. So I don't. I think we we have a lot of accountability. We've been criticized for that. That we are. It's like Fort Knox to get into one of our athletic events because we want to make sure we collect the money. I think we've taken more criticism than normal. We're strict about it. I mean, we block so off we just, our gates. So there's not an option for a family pass, that is what you're saying? Well, and like Dave said, when it was researched, people while waiting in line would have the pass pass through the fence to them if that's what, if that's what it took. But if the pass has your name and you have to have your license that has a Lisa Bad face on it. Well, we don't check the license. <laughs> there are other Lisa Bad faces. Now, here's the thing on operations. If we start checking license, then you have, like, <coughs> uh, Mason. If we have a crowd of 10,000 people out there and we have to check every license, what's going to happen then is they're not in their seats before the game starts. Then you have holy havoc out there that, what are you doing? You can't do it. So that's what we run into. When we really want to get technical about that or scanning something, just to have a scanner go out there, I would hate to see the cost of some of that. So that's the issue of the atmosphere to get kids in or people into a game doesn't lend itself to a very organized structure if you want to be that technical. Because right now we have the police there, we have the gates narrowed down, and we have multiple workers there, including our own staff, to make sure we're collecting money and just not letting people walk in randomly. Okay. Well, we, it's up, I mean, we do have a meeting on the 
20, I think, is when the next athletic council. It doesn't sound like there's enough time to sort of fully vet and explore this issue. So maybe it's something that has to sort of work over the next year. But I mean, I think it's something I think it's worth exploring well, we and understanding numbers. a little more. Absolutely. Yeah, running some of the numbers. I don't want to, certainly not a decision we want to rush into. Um, you know, so it sounds like we're going to need a little more time uh, to work through it. But I, I would hope that, you know, that we can work through that into the future athletic council meetings so that uh, it is something that we can bring back to the board and just report on so we can make a choice on what the, the financial implications would be and we can weigh all the options. Bandwidth pass hasn't been in effect since I've been here. And it, was, it wasn't in effect before I was here, so it's not something that's been reduced in recent years that I'm aware of. Now, I thought oh, we should just take that word off that stuff. We actually did away with it um, Mr. Lewis's first year here. Right. Is that what it was? Yeah, and, and I'm looking, I'm just doing some quick research right here. It has more to do all the, there's also the, the implication that a family pass would save you money. Comparable districts to ours, family passes are, are $250, $300. Um, so it, we were presenting the family pass as a cost savings um, that, that again, suddenly, you know, I already have four kids, I don't want any more, but you would throw a couple more kids in the van and, and, and then they would, that's what was happening is, suddenly my family of four became a family of eight. And then that, so then that becomes a savings or, you know, and that is where you saw a little bit of abuse with that. Um, but also the idea that a family pass is a, is a huge savings, at least in similar districts to us, is, is not necessarily the case. But every time we bring passes up, we have this much discussion of course, since I've been here about this. Well, we're new to it, so we didn't get to have yeah. a discussion yet. So what does happen? We're, we're having a discussion. <laughs> but I forgot all about what Karen said. Yeah. And Karen the problem was, was yeah. we were at, well, I would recommend taking off that there will not be a family pass for this year. Yeah. Off of the actual form, just uh, if we want to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, what we're going to do is the new board members wanted the family pass discontinued. So, <laughs> I, I need a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Love's got to take out a loan. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, back to you, John. Back to me. Yeah, thank you, Special sir. Special Energy. Members of, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Um, we have, uh, we are ending, coming to the end of our energy project that was started two years ago. Uh, we actually began the process as early as 2013 when I first came here. Uh, uh, and in, as we were developing the, the, uh, the project, um, you know, we had a lot of roof issues at Clear Creek, SI, um, actually all the buildings with the exception of the junior high was having roof issues at that point in time. So in, in conjunction with the, um, the energy project, we were also working on getting approval for some roof, roof work to be done. And so we ended up having uh, approvals for some roof work to be done and an energy project to be done. Um, the little bidder on the roof ended up being the same contractor that was working with the, the contractor, WPI, that got the, the energy project. So we, we took those two projects, um, the, uh, the, roof pro the roof project total was about $1.64 million. The energy project minus the roof was about $3.76 million. And the, that was the amount of money that the board approved the two separate actions two years ago. Uh, and so we were anticipating, in addition to that, based on what we were, the amount of work we were doing, this, we, we chose WTI because it was a little bit bigger project, but it had a lot better possibility for energy savings. So we were going to save a lot more money than we would have if we had taken uh, Johnson Controls was the, our second best project that we had. We had five total that they gave us proposals. So, we were anticipating hopefully getting up to upwards of $600,000 in rebates, which would have covered all of these two projects with the loan and the rebates that we were anticipating getting. So as we've gone through this process, um, we've, you know, we ran into a few things, just like everything, you got a $5 million project, there's a few things that get missed. We had a few lights that were missed and, 
and we so we we had some some change that we needed to make in the uh, auditorium in the LGI. The commons here got missed um, in terms of the lighting piece. Um, and then as the lighting progressed, we ended up making the decision to bring first grade to Clear Creek. And so rather than spending the money that was going to be spent at Clear Creek and then having brand new lights and those lights that hang down, those they're called pendant lights, um, we made a decision to go ahead and do a cost change to the project that would add about $100,000 to the project to um, you know, take down those pendant lights and then put in, um, in the in-grid lights, which made for a much better educational piece educational piece for the students that are now at Clear Creek because the roofs are, are so much better lit it's such a better learning environment than the, the hanging down lights that had been installed in the 60s. Um, so based on this, basically we ended up with um, about $153,000 that we that, of rebates that went back to the lighting contractor from the utilities, um, Duke Energy mainly, um, and then uh, the, the goods and services that we received from H. Sturgill was the full amount. Good job. We've got, I mean, for the first time in many years, uh, the, the intermediate school doesn't leak. Clear Creek doesn't leak. Uh, we're not having roof shingles blow off the dentist at five points, which is another wonderful thing. Uh, WTI has come across with their goods and services of the $3.7 million plus the, about $130,000 in those lighting ads that were there, um, and then a few other things. And so we've, got, we've had a really good project. We're saving uh, more than was anticipated. Uh, up until this point, we've already saved $380,000 in energy, and we've still got three months left to go um, in terms of energy. So we're seeing, we should be saving somewhere between fifty dollars to $100,000 more than what we anticipated. Um, so we, it's an excellent project. It was a good project. We've done it all, everything great all along. The, the reason that we're going to be here, and there's an action on the board item, is we owe Tremco $584,212.90 to complete the project. Their fiscal year ends April 30th. Um, so we have to, because it's a two-year-old project, we need to pay them to complete the project. They've completed their done their due diligence um, and one of the reasons why it's we're a little bit late getting to this point is we were trying to get some information from them to be able to justify making these payments um, and we just got that on Tuesday this week actually so that's why this ended up going out right away so if they don't get paid before April 30th it, they have to write it off as bad debt and their bad debt becomes bad debt against us in terms of our credit rating could take a hit. So we have to work, and that's why we've been working very hard with WTI to make sure we get all the information so that we can get this to the point where we can do it. So the we, we had approvals two years ago for $5.5 million. So the approvals are there, but because we were hoping to get up to 600000 in rebates, we were hoping to not have to come back to the board and use that general fund money to finish the project, we were anticipating getting these rebates. We ended up getting 153000 so far, but that's already was taken up in these change orders that were done um, that we didn't end up adding money into the project, but it was used in the project. So we're going to need to pay this $584,000, and so the best way we we got, we met and talked, and the best way for us to do it, we feel, is for the board to take an action to, to approve a transfer from the general fund into a permanent improvement fund, pay this so that we don't end up with a debt issue or, a, or a, a, any kind of hit to our credit rating, which is extremely important to school districts. Uh, and then we will be getting back uh, an anticipated one hundred sixty to two hundred thousand dollars in rebates. The um, WTI is supposed to file those tomorrow. Um, we've been pushing them to file those so that we can get it. But you know, those rebates usually take somewhere between six to 12 weeks to come back. So it's not enough time for us to, to wait for those rebates to pay. So 
we're, in the end, we're not going to end up with, with that little. Um, and in addition, that one of the things I forgot to, to, to bring up before is the other thing that we're looking at, there are tax incentive pieces that can be used for companies on these, re on not the rebates, but on some of the things that were done. We can't reap the benefits of tax incentives because we don't pay the tax to the federal government. But if we're going to still work with WTI to see if there's any of those um, tax incentives that are out there that we can transfer to a company and then they reimburse us for those tax things. It's completely legal. It's done all the time. But that might be another way to help offset some of this, this $584,000. We, we're going to, I'm, I'm very, very confident we're going to get 160. We may get upwards of 200 that Duke will make that determination at that time. So we're really looking at that somehow trying to offset that other 384. Okay. Three reports. I have one question. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought of after we talked previously. Are there, with what we have saved so far, are those set savings, or are there is there any chance that we would be saving any more with this energy project? Well, we we're right now we're they're, they're guaranteeing us to save. How much is our debt payment? About three hundred fifty-eight thousand. So three hundred fifty-eight thousand. We've already saved three ninety at this point in time. So so we're hoping to save another fifty between now and the end of the fiscal year. So. That alone right there is will help offset this. And if we continue to see these type of savings, that's anywhere from fifty to hundred thousand dollars a year in savings that wasn't included in this that will free up on our general fund, which helps this piece also. So if we're saving that much more this year, then next year we would anticipate seeing that same amount of savings. Well we would hope so. That I mean that's what Perspective. And I know there were some things that were going to happen later in the year, but do you, do you have a sense for how much capacity there is in the general fund to absorb something like this? I actually got anxious that year to even say thank you to but um, we've actually done really well this year with our Dollar amount that they turn 
money and submit their cards drop their costs. There's only so much money in the pool, so the percentage goes down based off of how much people submit. But if they get around 50%, which is what we received, about 50% is what we received last year, so just looking at that mark, we would get 587000 so that almost just took care of. That's special ed. Yes. And that's, and that you have to also look at it, though. You, if you remember us coming last year, um, we had several high-need high students moved in within like a month. <coughs> So those costs, it's always a year to every year, so they have to wait the years over, and then the next year is going to get catastrophic reimbursement from the previous year. So we're getting reimbursed this year for costs for last year. Our costs were a lot higher last year. I think they were like four hundred and seventy-four thousand dollars more. So, you know, and then some of the um, private placements that people who did also were additional costs. So those are some they have thresholds, it's like thirty-two, maybe fifty if your category one or five. something up there mm -hmm. I mean again the, 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 to do the degree of which is sort of hard to tell because we don't know what the, we're gonna pick something up there and we do we have some rebates that are sort of out right. there we just even beyond we get some extra energy savings correct you know in this year right. that and exceed the debt payments It'll help mitigate this. I mean, with, so I think we still have some capability I think, from other things in the five year two that we were just running. So generally speaking, it feels as if we're going to be okay. Like we're going to be able to absorb it. It's not an ideal situation like we talked about. I mean, it's, but I, I yeah, right. With the transfer from one from the general to the PI, would the rebate still be in the general
That's why I said it. I'm hoping by April we have yeah. yeah. <laughs> to have everything done by the end of April, but then we have to be after that because a lot of the stuff I get turned in directly and then we have to sit down and go and say, Wow, I'm going to